Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, episode 18, Marvelously Batty. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my beautiful and talented co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today, Michelle? I am fantabulous. How are you? I'm doing pretty good myself. So we've got a pretty full uh, podcast for us today. In our Disney Detective segment, we have some information about a new Marvel land Disney has announced. We've got some details on Frozen 2 uh, and uh, a new trailer for it. And then in our entertainment news, we have... Uh, some news from Taylor Swift and an, a surprise performance that she had put on. Then we have some more details on the Batman. I love how you just always say it like that. <laughs> just because. Uh, then we'll move on to our insightful picks and some afterthoughts. I think that's everything we've got for today. I think so. Uh, are we ready to dive in? Let's do it. All right. Go for Disney Detective. So if Galaxy's Edge wasn't enough, let's do some more construction in, in California. So brace yourself, superheroes. Lovers, so Marvel already had a a themed ride in Disneyland. Basically, they took the Tower of Terror and they had revamped it. Um, it was actually back in 2017 to be Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. So now it seems that they have um, that the city of Anaheim has approved building permits for a new attraction uh, and some new construction in Disneyland. Um, so including is a 2,071 square foot merchandise outlet complete with three canopies. Uh, also there's talk of a microbrewery as well. Um, and so they haven't really confirmed yet what the new construction, uh, will be, but talks are that there will be an interactive Spider-Man ride that will let visitors take on even villain evil villains um and disneyland isn't the only park that's actually getting some sort of marvel makeover um there are actually attractions that are planned uh at the various parks so walt disney studios park in paris is planning to open their marvel ride in 2020 um epcot in florida will be opening their marvel ride uh which will be a guardians of the galaxy ride in 2021 and Hong Kong Disneyland is planning theirs for 2023. Um, so Marvel Land in Disneyland is actually going to be where a Bugs Land uh, attraction was. And that was the attraction area that was um, inspired by the movie A Bug's Life. Um, and it actually closed back in September of 2018. So it's it's been closed, you know, for a little bit. A little while now um and so at the moment there's a bunch of construction walls that are up that basically read stark industries um to kind of give a little teaser obviously about it um but again new details are still a little fuzzy at this time um guardians of the galaxy mission breakout though has been voted one of the the better rides in Disneyland uh, since it opened. So it's been, you know, it's been doing well. So now they're going to obviously theme the area uh, to the rest of, of, of that part. Um, but 
with D23 coming up uh, at the end of August, I'm sure more information, you know, will be coming out about, you know, this and the expansion, you know, in the other parks. So is it just Disneyland that is getting a Marvel's Land or are they doing something in Disney World? You weren't paying attention to what I said. Well, I know Disney World's <laughs> getting multiple rides, but are they getting a concentrated... Epcot. Well, no. Epcot's going to have... They haven't said about full-fledged lands. Right, that's what like, I'm saying. Right, yeah, they haven't mentioned that. Like when Galaxy's Edge was done, they did a mirror version of Galaxy's Edge in Disney World. Right, right. We're not talking about that Right, thing. but the thing is, because they're, they're not doing the same ride in Disneyland as they are in Disney World, because in Disney World, it's still Tower of Terror. They're not planning on changing it over anytime soon. Disney, you know, Walt Disney World in Epcot is getting the Guardians of the Galaxy ride, which and seems kind of... And they're that ride straight up. They're not converting anything. Right. There. Well, they took down a ride and, you know, basically, yeah, they're building it up from, from scratch. They're not using a pre-existing ride right. they're using a pre-existing sort of building because last time we were down there we saw the yeah they were doing the construction building. right and it an and it obviously thing. was taking up much more than what the original um space was for universe of energy which is what you know they got rid of but again they're not you know i can't really see them doing an epcot you know in epcot a Marvel land. It doesn't, right. it doesn't fit. And it, even the fact that they're putting a guardians of the galaxy ride in Epcot doesn't really, in my opinion, doesn't, doesn't fit either. So as of right now, there's nothing, but it's again, it's almost like they had no other place to, to put right. It, it was like, Hey, point. where are we going to put this ride? Uh, we'll put it here. Yeah. Yeah. Kind where of, it does have an afterthought. Yeah. Yeah. But again, D 23 is coming up in August. So I'm sure we'll, we'll hear more about, you know, more about it later. So yeah. So kind of cool. Frozen two. So what do we have for that? So we have the new trailer that dropped. So they had a teaser trailer, and now here is the new trailer. lands and into the unknown. But be careful. We have always feared Elsa's powers were too much for this world. Now we must hope. I won't let anything happen to her. Well, that was cool. I know, wasn't it? And when is that due out? That is due out November 22nd. Okay. Very cool. See? I, I like it. I like cool stuff. So that was an extended trailer from the one that was right. Previously so the released. so the original trailer basically ended with her falling into the water, nothing, nothing more. Right. This one, obviously, there's some sort of spirit animal or something with the horse. Her Patronus. <sighs> Wrong franchise. Sorry. Wrong franchise. Sorry. I'm impressed that you you know <laughs> that you know that. Um, 
but yeah, it, it you know kind of makes you wonder, hmm, what what's what's going on in the new movie? And what was interesting was there uh, was an article that popped up a couple days later um, that the Disney reveals first footage of Frozen two, um, and with a little bit of explanation. So there was an animation festival in France, and it was just a couple of days after the new trailer dropped that they not only. Deb- displayed um debuted the the first footage but also artwork from uh the movie as well so it was revealed that the story basically picks up three years after the original first ends and it's an evolution and an expansion of the story of frozen and many of the questions raised in the first movie become the mysteries that our gang are now trying to solve in this film. And the main question basically is why was Elsa born with these powers? Cause they never really explained it. So now, you know, it, cause she's one of the X-Men. Maybe you never know. She could have been. Um, so basically, you know, what, you know, her parents obviously knew what happened, you know, a little bit more, I guess, backstory, you know, with the childhood and her parents. Um, you know, there's a, a bunch of... They always implicate the parents, like the parents are hiding something. Right, and maybe that? they did. Maybe there was some sort of pact that the parents made or, or something. You never know. Um, so basically, uh, one of the scenes that they they were talking about was that Elsa's father relays a tale of a battle uh, that had happened in the forest long ago when the spirits of the forest faced off against the people of the kingdom. So that's where, you know, all those animals, you know, are, are coming from. The so rock people come back. The then. rock people come back. Maybe, you know, they... And Elsa goes to the sea and meets Moana, right? <laughs> the Disney crossover. Crossover, crossover time. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? But all of the, the original cast, uh, Elsa, Anna, Kristoff, and even Olaf are... Uh, in the movie, and they basically go off on this adventure to uh, try and help Elsa, I guess, figure out who she, you know, who she is. Maybe it's a Lion King crossover, because you never remember who you are and, and, all, right. and all that. Um, so, again, you know, they were showing the, the scene um, of her swimming deep in the ocean and trying to, you know, turn things into ice. Um, well, she's in a good spot for that. If she, right, to do that. she is, um, you know, so, uh, you know, lots of the, there were more scenes that they showed in, in France um, that kind of brought more things to, to question. Um, the film is actually still in production right now. It has about seven more weeks of animation to complete and then 10 weeks of special effects to be put in. And it's due out in France, actually, on November 20th and then in the U.S. on the 22nd. Um, one of the things they were they mentioned was that on a French poster, it shows the four of them walking past a lake in a bright sun, but the reflection of the lake is dark red. So maybe she turns to the dark, dark side, side and there's yeah. a Star Wars crossover. <sighs> I love the fact that they're all speculating on this like it's a Marvel movie now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, basically. Well, you know, but it'll be interesting to see because obviously we know from when Frozen, the original, came out how underwhelmed Disney was. Oh, yeah, from a marketing standpoint. From a marketing standpoint and merchandise standpoint. You know, you couldn't yeah. find anything. And all the knockoffs came out. All the knockoffs and came up. And, and, you know, even, you know, for our daughter, you know, I, I had a dress made for her, you know, that wasn't even a it frozen dress. It still qualifies dress. for the drinking game, though. It does still <laughs> the drinking game. <laughs> Do you want to explain? It's that? Elsa, a drink. <laughs> yeah, the big joke was uh, when you would walk around uh, a Disney park, um, and, you know, because every little girl was basically dressed as, as Elsa. It was a drink. And then what was really funny was when we got our, what, she was like nine at the time. When we were, you know, got her to, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, and she would see it and didn't understand when you had to take a drink. It was alcohol. And, yeah. <laughs> For the record, we weren't drinking alcohol. No, we weren't. We weren't drinking anything, actually. It was just when we saw Elsa, we said drink. That was just so. the running joke. <laughs> that was just the running joke. Wow. Um, so that is it for Disney Detectives. All right. Let's move on to our entertainment news. 
So first up, we have uh, Taylor Swift uh, gave a surprise performance. Why don't you give us a little background on that, and then we can take a look at it. Sure. So um, Taylor Swift actually gave a surprise performance at the Stonewall in uh, just the other the other night. Um, Taylor Swift, if you don't know, she is actually um, very pro LGBT um, and very active, you know, in the community and supporting glad um as well um her one song actually gives shout outs uh to glad and the lgbt community and she actually made a surprise performance in front of about 100 people at new york stonewall inn um and that's actually you know for those of you that don't know that's where the riots were in 1969 um so this being pride month it's you know and a big anniversary for it um this was kind of kind of cool so let's uh play a little clip So that was kind of a special appearance she did there, huh? Yeah, obviously surprised everybody that was, was in the crowd. Um, so after a rousing pair of songs from Sarah Bareilles, including her version of Brave, that basically had, you know, everybody singing along, Swift was greeted by the evening's headliner, um, Modern Family star Jesse Tyler Ferguson, who you kind of saw in, in that clip. Um, she thanked him for inviting her uh, and <laughs> basically said, oh, I heard Jesse, you know, this is his favorite song when he does karaoke. So, um, you know, so basically everybody sang along, you know. So and, doing and then, karaoke with Taylor Swift. Yeah, that's that's not that, a bad that night. Cool. Yeah. So um, before she performed, AEG, which promoted the event, presented Stonewall with a $50,000 check to support its Stonewall in Gives Back initiative. Um, to develop LGBTQ anti-basis training standards um, to help support uh, the fund. So that that was kind of cool. And GLAAD actually, uh, the organization GLAAD actually released a statement on Friday saying that they've been getting an influx of small donations in the amount of $13. People go, hmm, what's that for? Well, 13 happens to be Taylor Swift's favorite number. (laughs) <laughs> so she's getting fans that are just, hey, I can't give a whole lot of money, but thirteen dollars I can give, right? Just and they're giving of it her support, nice. right? Exactly. Um, so thought that that was kind of cool. Uh, the organization actually started a Facebook uh, fundraiser for fans to support its LGBTQ adv- advocacy work uh, during Pride Month, choosing thirteen hundred dollars as its goal. Again. With, uh, so um, uh, Anthony Ramos, who is the director of talent engagement for GLAAD, basically said Taylor Swift is one of the world's biggest pop stars. And the fact that she continues to use her platform to help support us um, and to get the Equality Act signed is a true you know, sign of, of being an ally. Um, earlier this month, Swift had urged her fans to contact senators in her home state of Tennessee and elsewhere to demand the past the passage of uh, the Equality Act. And later that night, she made a special appeal to the R- the I Heart Wango Tango concert in Los Angeles, appearing in rainbow garb, uh, leaving fans to whether, you know, if the colors were going to be part of her new video, I guess. So, so nice to see, you know, I got to say, you know, I'm not really a 
fan of Taylor Swift. Like, I don't love her, but I don't hate her. Like, her music is very catchy. It's very poppy. You know, I think for, for younger girls, you know, and anybody else, you know, she's she's a decent role model to, you know. Yeah, she's had some dating issues, but... Who hasn't? <laughs> well, and she, you know? she hasn't found herself mired in some of the controversy that so many other pop stars oh, have. Oh, absolutely. Uh, which makes her, at least from a, a parent standpoint, mm-hmm. you know, someone that I don't mind taking on that role model standpoint. Because mm-hmm. she, she always, I mean, she's got a history of supporting well-known charities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Good causes. She does great things to give back to mm-hmm. her fans. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, um, yeah. And it's nice to see someone like that take mm-hmm. their notoriety and put it towards a good cause like this. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we were just watching um, uh, a documentary on uh, public television mm-hmm. about the whole movement and everything and where they had started mm-hmm. out and seeing where it came from and where they are today. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's nice to see the progress that's been made. Mm -hmm. Um, it's even nicer to see celebrities jumping on to support that now Mm -hmm. to help make even more progress because it's not where it needs to be. Right. Right. But it's a lot better than where it was. Right. And it's nice to see, you know, somebody using their celebrity for good. Absolutely. And, and in a very positive light. Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so, in the Batman news... The Batman. <laughs> you just make me laugh. Um, so now it seems that more news is coming out. It seems like every couple of days uh, more, more stuff comes out about it. So, it seems that the four lead villains have been revealed. And some not surprising. And uh, one, at least for me, was kind of like... Huh? So are these the four villains that are going to be in the first movie? This is what they're kind of speculating because, okay. again, it is supposed to be a trilogy of movies. So I don't really know. You know, they basically, so it seems like there's this uh, new, I guess, scoop company uh, who's out there who they were the ones that kind of broke this news. And again, they're kind of new to the the scoop game, so to speak. So they're, you know, you got to kind of take it with a grain of salt. You know, I don't know where they got their sources from. So, you know, some of it might be true. Some of it might not be. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, these are the villains for now uh, that have been reported to be the four foes that uh, William Pattinson, who will be the... The four fiend foes. <laughs> Say that five times fast. <laughs> Dare you. Um, so according to the website, uh, the Riddler is actually kind of the main villain, I guess. Um, it's uh, it's kind of a surprise, but not. But fans have been hoping to see a more comic-accurate take on the character for years. Uh, Reeves is said to be looking for a male actor of... He really doesn't have a a type that he's looking for right now. Basically, just between the ages of 30 and 40. So, they're not looking, you know, for anybody really specific right now. So, that rules me out there, unfortunately. Right, you're a little too old for that. Young, too young for it. Right, you're too... Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. (laughs) Um, then obviously the second villain is Penguin. Um, and again, uh, Penguin has been, you know, around, um, and obviously he was very prominent in Gotham as well, but they're looking to make it a different type of Penguin, not the type that was in, um, in Gotham. They're actually looking for a short, obese man. See, you're too tall. Oh, I have the obese part. <laughs> you got the big part. Um, but somebody with a long nose? Um, you know, prosthetics wouldn't work for that, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and again, it sounds like they're going for, you know, more comic So I'm thinking more like a Danny DeVito. I think they need to bring Danny DeVito back to play it. But they want somebody between the ages of 20 and 40. Hey, so look, they can de-age anybody now That's true. With Nowadays, the, they are doing that. So it, it basically, it almost sounds like they're kind of going back towards the Michael Keaton 
Right, right. Because they were more comic-y characters. Yeah, the Tim Burton versions. Right. And e- even going back with the darker right, versions right, of it. Right, right, you know? right. Um, and then the third villain is Catwoman. Meow. <laughs> Um, and she's basically described as the Gotham City burglar who wears the tight one-piece outfit, uses the whip, um, and basically they're looking for an actress between the ages of 20 and 30. So, oh, sure, they're going to restrict it to an actress now. Huh? Right, so that they know will definitely, you know, be a female. Um, and again, everything's been kind of very generic descriptions um, of what they're they're looking for. Um, now, kind of the surprise villain is kind of the the C list villain, according to this article, will be Firefly. Um, so Firefly will be reportedly making his proper big screen debut um, in this adaptation um, as a parent secondary villain. Um, basically, it's a professional arsonist known as Firefly. Basically, attempts to burn everything, you know. Not the sci-fi version of Firefly. This is right, totally the different comic version right. of Firefly. Um, they're looking for a male actor between the ages of twenty to thirty. Oh, uh, age um, discrimination! <laughs> age discrimination. Now, of course, what I thought was interesting is I'm besides any character that hasn't been in. If there's a a DC character that's been in the comics but hasn't been any of the movies or any of the TV shows, I I honestly, I don't know who any of them are. Um, so that's why, for me, watching Gotham, it was kind of like, ooh, who's this? And, right. you know, it was, it was a surprise. Well, Gotham was fun to watch because you saw the character before they became a villain. Right. And you didn't know who they were going right. to Right, who were they going to turn into? But then when they turned into... Somebody, I was like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Where you knowing, you know, having a little bit more knowledge right. of it, you were kind of like, oh, and I'd be like, huh? oh, that's cool. Um, but what I thought was interesting was that in Gotham, Firefly was a, a a woman. Right. So when I saw this, I was like, Firefly's a guy. But Firefly was still a C-list villain in Gotham. Too, right, so. exactly. She was only in a couple of you know, episodes, you know, anyway. Um, so that was, you know, interesting. It was kind of cool. Um, the, this, you know, uh, they were talking about that it might be set in the 1990s period. Um, which kind of gives me that Tim Burton feel, you know, cause that's when his, you know, Batman movies, you know, were made, but I guess, you know, because even Gotham, even though it was kind of modern, you knew it kind of wasn't because like they had cell phones, but they, they were the old flip phones. They were old flip phones and all the cars were really old. So you really had no idea what the time frame was. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Um, so obviously it is going to be a three picture deal because it is going to be a trilogy, which is kind of, you know, it's, it's not, unheard of these days for actors to sign, you know, multi uh, project deals, you know. Just look at Marvel. They did it right. Right, exactly. Um, So, you know, basically, right now, Penguin and Catwoman are definitely confirmed to appear. The others are are kind of, um, you know, the the hinting at uh, aspect. Um, But then we might see more villains, um, you know, throughout the movies because, you know, you're talking the three movies, you know, are the, these three just going to be in the first one or See, my gonna... concern is if they're going to stick four villains in one movie, it's that's gonna be... already killed Batman movies and Spider-Man right. movies with overkill. Right. So, or maybe they kind of introduce towards the end of one, you know, one kind of right, comes in, right. you know, again, you know, uh, you know, we're not really sure yet. Um, obviously there's going to be younger versions of familiar faces. So you're going to get to see the commissioner Gordon and you're going to get to see Alfred, um, you know, the younger versions, um, of them. Um, the boy wonder Robin, you know, is he going to be in there? And they were saying that currently he's part of Titans. So you're not really sure which version version of Dick Grayson, you know, you're going to get because he has to ditch Robin to become Nightwing, all that stuff that I don't even know about. Cause I just know Batman and Robin. 
I'm a simple kind of <laughs> back girl person. Um, not really a DC person. So, you know, it's, it's kind of go shoo, over my head. Um, but the focus will also be more on his detective skills. So he's not really the crime fighter. It's more, you know, solving cases. So in that respect, it's going to be more of a noir tale, you know, kind of like the old detective films, you know, from, you know, the 1940s. It kind of, you know, almost sounded like that. It was a dark and stormy night. And the Batman walked in. Um, but production production uh, will begin next year. Um, and the other interesting thing that I thought w- was kind of cool was that the Batman is kind of inspired by Jekyll and Hyde. Um, that late last year, Reeves was asked about his take on the Bruce Wayne Batman divide and which of them is real and which of them is the facade. And interestingly, when it came uh, to his inspiration of how the aspects of the characters were handled, he actually pointed to Jekyll and Hyde being a factor. And it was something, uh, you know, when, when I read that, I was like, hmm, I never really thought about. So Batman with a tie-in to leave Extraordinary Gentleman. There you go. Totally. You got, you got another crossover. I'll start writing it now. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> so, I don't know. The more I read about this, the more it doesn't doesn't sound so bad it might actually be it's certainly got its appeal yeah um, yeah it's, it's catering to a different audience mm-hmm. than what we're used to right I think. and i know the 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 more recent batman movies i haven't seen they were they were too dark for me they were yeah. too you know they they didn't have you know any appeal where the you know the older ones you know well, they were terrible too i mean well, yeah. batman versus superman terrible mm-hmm. yeah, yeah justice league was really just mm-hmm. the next sequel to superman right right they just had a couple other people show up at the same time <laughs> hey we're having a party you want to come over <laughs> uh, i still say you know if if dc was smart they'd stop making films and stick the tv they right because that they do TV. they do much better with that so yeah so again we shall see cool that's it for entertainment news that is it for entertainment news my love so we shall come back with our insightful picks of the week And as always, my dear, the floor is yours. It is. Well, half yours. I pay half the mortgage. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, hey, DC. <laughs> Let's talk about a DC show that's not DC, but it's a DC character. Sure. So, uh, my insightful pick for this week is Krypton. Um, it is actually on the Sci Fi Network. Uh, it just started season two. Um, just last week, uh, the first season actually started, uh, March of 2018. Um, and so basically the story of Krypton is basically the story of Superman's grandfather. So we're talking before, you know, he's born before his dad is even born. Um, so it's, you know, it's, you don't need to know the story of Superman to you know, to know anything about these characters. Cause for me, these were all characters that I really didn't even know except right. for like Zod. Like he was the only one that, Hey, I know him. And get somehow he's in this. Right. Exactly. It kind of makes you go, Hmm. And then of course there's that whole time traveler guy who, which they've not really explained. They haven't really explained him in, in the first season of how, you know, he's a friend of Superman's. So you kind of have that Superman tie in, right. but it's, you know, Superman's grandfather, his great grandfather and his great, great grandfather is basically who the story is really, you know, about. And it's interesting cause it's, it's dark and gritty. Um, it, kind of reminds me i was trying to think of what it what else it reminded me of because it wasn't your typical superman and you know it's not a superhero right they don't have superpowers nobody has still on krypton right everybody's on krypton nobody has a power superman's power comes from from the color of our sun right they don't have that so these are all regular civilians right they're all regular civilians but you see the hierarchy like you have the military Faction, you have the ambassadors or the um, the government factors, and then you have you know the the everyday people, but then you have the people that you know have 
no rights of you know the yeah, homeless it's a complica- people. It's complicated caste system that they use. Right, right. Like and you know certain people aren't allowed to talk to other people, and right. you know and and childbirth is basically predetermined and. Again, the whole class system. So it was the first couple of episodes were a little hard to follow because, again, I had in my mind sent Superman. And, right. you know. And the only thing you see as Superman is his slowly dissolving cape. Right, exactly. Um, we haven't started to watch season two yet. So um, that's. We're a couple of days behind on. on Right. On TV watching, <laughs> darn summertime. Um, too many other things going on, um, but it, it's it's a very good show. We we both enjoyed it, and we were both excited to hear that you know season two was was coming, and you know so it, it's definitely if you're into Superman, this is definitely something that you know that you might like because again you know especially if you're you know a, a fan of, of the comics you probably know a lot more of these characters you know than than I do since I admitted that I'm not a DC person right. I only know the characters from uh, you know from the different movies and and television shows but very well done um, you know and interesting twists and in who's backstabbing who and and you know a lot of of that going on so highly recommend it cool good pick good thank pick. you so my pick this week is uh it's a documentary i was <gasps> i was gonna pretend that really? it wasn't but it, it really you is. could lie uh, but it is a documentary about UFOs, so that Ooh, should count for something. There you go. Something different. Uh, this is a new show on the History Channel called Unidentified, Inside America's UFO Investigation. And this is a documentary show that is based on um, actual footage that's been taken. Um, I'll read the the... Uh, about here it's rather long so i'll try to be brief with it okay in december of 2017 the new york times published a stunning front page expose about the pentagon's mysterious ufo program the advanced aerospace threat identification program aatip featuring an interview with a former military intelligence official and special agent in charge louis elizondo elizondo who confirmed the existence of the hidden government program, the controversial story was the focus of worldwide attention. Previously run by Elizondo, uh, ATIP was created to research and investigate unidentified aerial phenomenon, or UAPs, including numerous videos of reported encounters, three of which were released to a shocked public in 2017. Elizondo resigned after expressing to the government that these UAPs could pose a major threat to our national security and not enough was being done to deal with them or address our potential vulnerabilities. Now as part of a history's underground uh, as a part of history's underground I'm sorry, as a part of history's groundbreaking new six-part one-hour limited series Unidentified Inside America's UFO Investigation Elizondo is speaking out for the first time with Tom DeLong, co-founder and president of To The Stars Academy of Arts and Science, and Chris Mellon, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense and Intelligence, to expose a series of startling encounters and embark on on a fascinating new investigation that will urge the public to ask questions and look for answers. The series will reveal newly authenticated evidence and footage, interviews from eyewitnesses and former military personnel who have never spoken out before, and extensive breakthroughs in understanding the technology behind these unknown phenomenon in our skies. Hmm. That's a mouthful. Sure was. So basically what what they're doing is taking actual known documented uh, accounts mm-hmm. talking to witnesses, some of which they are protecting their identity because okay. they're still active duty military personnel. Okay. Um, and trying to bring this to light. No one is saying that these are aliens. That's the first thing that, that people kind of have to get over. Right. Um, what they're doing is they're looking at 
basically telemetry that have been captured. There was the one episode details uh, uh, an incident over five days of a training uh, accident, uh, not accident, incident mm-hmm. um, off the coast of California near Catalina Island where a U.S. carrier group tracked these objects that were performing aerial maneuvers that conventional uh, vehicles could not do. Okay. Um, in For instance, they had one incident where it dropped from 30,000 feet to sea level in what would have amounted to about the speed of Mach 60. Oh, wow. Um, and there's no known, you know... Uh, country on the on earth at this time that possesses technology that can mm-hmm. do that right right so they're not saying that it's aliens what they're saying is whatever's doing these things whatever whatever has these capabilities is far in excess of our own technical capabilities um, basically we're hopelessly outmatched when it comes to even tracking things like this it almost sounds like a modern version of project blue book it it it, it does yeah yeah and there were three specific incidents as the as the about us said they were released to the public you Mm -hmm. can go out and you can look at these things as part of the freedom of information act Mm -hmm. um there was this one particular incident um over the course of five days was tracked on radar and different things they had one where there was a a FLIR pod on one of the F-18s that was flying on the carrier that actually took images of this thing. Oh, wow. Um, and they described it quite accurately as it looks like a chiclet. <laughs> you know? And, and that's what this thing looks like. It looks like a little chiclet. Okay. Um, so the show itself is very well done, and he goes to various locations, talks to different witnesses, and the one thing that he does emphasize in each of these interviews is, I'm not going to ask you anything about classified data mm-hmm. or sources or anything. He says, if any classified information is revealed, we'll stop the recording immediately. Interesting. Um, so he's managed to get some people who have refused to talk uh, to do interviews. Um, he's brought in aeronautics experts, including someone from the National Transportation Board, to actually look at data that track these these objects to basically provide their expert opinion as to what could do this, what kind of capabilities and, and who possesses those things. Mm -hmm. Um, And some of the names that you have in here are not insignificant people. I mean, Mm -hmm. you have the deputy assistant secretary of defense and intelligence and a a government, former government official doing this, you know, so it's not, you know, crazy guys in the back room with freaky hair pretending that there's aliens. (laughs) Right. Right. Um, Hmm. Reputable. People, reputable yeah. people that are that are reporting these things. I mean, and you have to you have to go back and you look at even Project Blue Book is, mm-hmm. is a fictionalized version of these accounts. Mm-hmm. Um, but reputable people report it back then a lot. Right. That was brushed on the carpet. Even Jimmy Carter mm-hmm. at one point in time filed a UFO sighting mm-hmm. before he was president. So, you know, and the concern that they have here is not oh we're looking for aliens and we're finding aliens. It's these people can do things that our technology is so far behind on that if, if there's a threat somewhere, whether it's a it's another country that's acting or or you know what what's the plausible explanation? Mm-hmm. If there isn't, then what are the theoretical explanations? So they they go about it in a very um, uh, analyst type uh, way of trying to figure out what it is, rather than saying, oh, okay, well. We saw uh, a writing with a guy with a big head on a, a tomb in Egypt. So there <laughs> right, has to be right. Aliens. So there has to be something. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, but a very good show. It's entertaining. It's kind of frightening. Some of the accounts that they reveal, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> it's uh, it's it's definitely worth watching. Okay. So, very cool. Good pick. Unidentified inside America's U.S. UFO investigation, History Channel Fridays at ten Eastern. Very cool. Shall we come back for some afterthoughts, my dear? We shall. Awesome. And your afterthoughts. So, uh, we just found out that Star Wars Celebration Anaheim 2020 dates have been announced. Um, So, obviously, Star Wars Celebration just occurred a couple months back. 
um, and we have uh, the new dates already uh, for 2020, which will be August 27th through the 30th out in, like I said, Anaheim, California. Um, tickets will actually be going on sale June 21st. So already That's tickets. a little bit further a dri- further drive than uh, Chicago was. Right, right. So oh. for this one, we we probably want to fly if we if we wanted to go. So are we going to this one? I don't know. Are we? I think for the sake of the podcast, we have to go. Right. <laughs> sure. So we need to cover live. We'll we'll put, we're broadcast there you go. live we'll, from we'll Anaheim. Broadcast live. That gives us that gives us uh, like a year to prepare. So I think we I think we're good. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> Works for you. Sure. Um, and one of the other things. Um, uh, we talked about last week that we're actually going to be attending tonight is if you're if you happen to be local, um, the Man Music Center in Philadelphia does various um, movies with full orchestras during the summer. Um, so we are seeing Raiders of the Lost Ark tonight. Um, later uh, next month, we're actually seeing The Empire Strikes Back. Um, if you're a Harry Potter fan, which our daughter is not, as we've mm-hmm. mentioned numerous times, July 20th, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire will be in concert with the Philadelphia Orchestra. Um, if you are a science type person, there's the movie The Voyage to the Moon, the 50th anniversary. They're going to be doing that with the Philadelphia Orchestra as well on July 24th. Um, Greece. You know, if you're a fan of the musical Grease, um, they're going to be doing that August 15th uh, with the Chamber Orchestra of Philadelphia. Now, I did find a website, um, filmconcertslive.com, that I believe is the production company of, um, well, at least Raiders of the Lost Ark. I don't know if Empire Strikes Back is is part of that as well. Um, and they actually do it all over the country, various movies. So they have Skyfall. They have How to Train Your Dragon. They do Jur- Jurassic Park. Um, the Addams Family, Star Trek Beyond, Jaws. Um, so various different movies various different places throughout the country if when you click on the calendar it'll actually um tell you where um the different uh movies will be so if that's something that you're interested in in seeing um last year we saw star wars a new hope with and that was fantastic with the philadelphia orchestra and that was just really cool because again it's a movie you've seen a gazillion times but to actually see them you know see the orchestra performing and you realize wow the orchestra plays a whole whole yeah. lot it's it's not yeah. that quiet of a movie um so we're obviously looking forward to raiders of the lost ark uh tonight and obviously empire strikes back um next month so again if you're a fan of you know movies and you know seeing it in a different way um and you're local to philadelphia you know, the man does it. But like I said, I found, you know, the other website. So, you know, if you're not from, you know, the area here, you might have a local venue, you know, that is showing them uh, around in your area. Very cool. Uh, I think that's it for the podcast today. Mm -hmm. Uh, We do do, we do record the podcast at some point over the weekend. Usually Uh, they go live Monday morning on YouTube and uh, Buzzsprout, our uh, website as well at uh, insightsintothings.com. Uh, you get to it at uh, podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com, uh, youtube.com slash insightsintothings as well. Uh, and we broadcast them live typically uh, Sunday evenings and again Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, keep an eye out on our twitch.tv slash insights into things channel for the events. And I think that's it. I think that is. Well, thank you for another fantastic podcast, my dear. Thank you for joining me as always. And we'll talk to everyone next week. Have a good one, guys. Oh, boy, my ears are sweating. So that went well. You know, you didn't think you had much of a podcast yesterday. No. Congratulations for pulling that one together. Thank you.
Oh. I do my best under pressure. You sure do. Oh. 